Good afternoon. I was told not to have any notes, but I have them right here. And I did think about giving my speech in English, but I would like to show you that how a person from Osaka trying to speak Japanese the Tokyo way would sound. Can you see this? This is my signature. It's in hiragana character. It says Iwata Matsu. It's very simple, very easy to understand. When I was little, uh, my family owned a small company from my grandparents' generations. The company is not, the company went out of business, unfortunately. But since I was little, I thought that I would become the owner as well. It was a very vague idea, but I think that was my first uh, career dream. Then when I was in elementary school, I thought that having a signature might be useful since I will eventually become a president or a CEO. That's when I came up with the signature. Uh, last month, I wrote a book, three books actually, for the first time. One became a bestseller. And the readers often um, ask for a sign. After 40 years, I have been able to show you the signature. This is when I was a student, just like you. I was playing baseball. And I was also working as a part-time. I was a lecturer. So in the end, I thought about declining, declining all the offers. But one of the recruiters that I met by chance was very attractive. He was a very attractive person. And then I decided to work for Nissan Automobiles. And you know, in companies, uh, the new employees have to make a speech. And for that speech, I said that I will work hard to become a CEO of Nissan. And the audience, they did not take me very warmly. And after that speech, uh, my boss, he didn't say, he said some not so very nice things to me. But now that I think back, I had no idea of what becoming a CEO was about. But since I was going to work for Nissan for the rest of my life, I thought, why not aim for the top as a salary man, which is to become a CEO. I thought that was the natural way of thinking. It wasn't necessarily about becoming rich or becoming great. Uh, I live in Urayasu, and in Urayasu Station, there are two hamburger shops. So let's say it's hamburger shop A and hamburger shop B. And when I go to a hamburger shop A, the employees are very lively. They seem to be having fun. <laughs> and it says, smiles are free on the menu. And then hamburger B, which is only about 50 meters away. The employees do not look very happy. They're very dark. And they simply just do not look happy at all. And I became to wonder why that is. What they're selling is the same, hamburgers. And most are part-time workers, so their hourly rates are about the same. But why is there such a huge difference, depending on just the shops? One, the employees are lively, and on the other, the employees are not. Why is that? I was curious. And that difference all came down to management. That's how I figured it out. So I wanted to learn more about management. 
And I did have a difficult time. I only had a TOEIC score of 300, and I studied hard for two years and raised it to 900 points. And I entered uh, UCLA Business School. And I learned a lot, finance, marketing, everything. And I also learned different values that came from people all across the world. But the majority of the students who were studying at UCLA came with their own money. And they don't think about working for a big company. And so I realized and learned that there are different values. When I was taking classes, of course, because it is a business school, it all comes down to numbers, how, many, how much profits there are, everything in numbers. Even human resources, it was all measured in numbers, and its conclusion was given in numbers. Of course, financing and marketing knowledge is important, and it was very useful when I became a CEO. But I wondered if that was really what it was all about. Of course, I worked very hard during my years in business school, but I read uh, Oriental philosophy and Japanese uh, novels, especially Ryotaro Shiba, in order to balance out my mental state. Then I began working for Atlas, which is a game company. It was one of the companies that were listed for its success in the Purikura machines. But after the boom was gone, business became difficult. And the owner uh, really liked me and asked me if I wanted to write on a blank camp canvas. And he asked me to come to Atlas. This was my first experience as a CEO, and to re I wanted to rebuild the company. So I made the very first speech as my CEO in front of all the employees. And I told them that cash flow management would be important. I talked about that for about 30 minutes, things that I learned at business school. But the employees, they were all standing up listening to me. But it seemed as though their soul wasn't there. They were there physically, but they weren't there mentally. And what I was talking to them about wasn't moving them at all. And as a manager, of course, it is important to think about cash flow, but that does not move the employees. Since then, um, I began to talk about how to greet the customers and to thank them. That's what I started to talk about during my speeches. In business school, and I'm sure many of you who take business classes are taught about what businesses are for, and that is to maximize profit, profits. Or, or increase its shares. Companies are for the shareholders. And the role of the manager is to increase the value of that company. Of course, I can understand that. But as a CEO, it makes me wonder if that is truly right. Some Japanese uh, managers would say, well, that's not Exactly, correct. I'm mean, incorrect. But I still had doubts. And during that time, I became the CEO of the body shop. And during that time, I felt that I received a sign. It wasn't something that I struggled with, that I thought over and over again and came to a conclusion about, but it was more of a sign. And I began thinking about what are companies for? And I came to this conclusion. Companies exist to make society a better place. For example, the body shop wants to improve society and make the world a better place through cosmetics. By using cosmetics, women feel happier. Or Starbucks. The mission of Starbucks 
is to revitalize people and give the Starbucks, Starbucks experience. So of course, SFC has, has contributed to the society by uh, through teaching students. So everything has its own purpose of its existence. So the purpose for its existence is what I want to talk about next. That is, in other words, a mission, or the management or company philosophy. But I like the, to put it as a mission. Mission is very important for companies. I felt, I realized that through my own management experiences. It's the same for the body shop in Starbucks. But all the employees, part-time workers, are working very hard. The loyalty for, loyalty for the company is very high. This is because there is an incredible mission. I have been a CEO at three companies for eight years, and that is one of the conclusions that I came up with. And one day, I realized that mission is very important, but what about for individuals? For example, Iwata Company or Nakamura Company. Everyone, each individual is a CEO of yourself. But you're living here today. That, that's, very, that's a very uh, lucky, privileged thing. Coming born to this world is a like, very, a for, very fortunate thing. I've been living for over 50 years, but I think this is very lucky. And each person has their own reason for, or purpose for its existence. But what is your mission? Would you be able to answer that question? So this is what I thought. It's very simple. What you love, what you're good at, and what you can do for others. These three loops can be your mission. For example, I can talk about baseball. I love baseball. And I've been playing baseball until uh, college. And I was a pitcher. And I was good at it. So I think I could be said that I was uh, good, at, good at this. It would fit into one of the loops. But no one would come to see me play. So that's why baseball was a hobby for me. But let's take Darvish, for example. Of course, he has played baseball all his life. And his, his pitches are very difficult to bat. But people would actually go see Darvish play by paying money. So that's his mission, but what is my mission? My mission is to teach leadership. When I saw the disaster, the earthquake, tsunami disaster, I felt that um, such managers in, are very scarce in Japan. I think Japan needs a leader. Of course, when I was young, I was captain of a team and was a class representative. And I've also been a CEO for three companies during the eight years. So I think I am good at that. So to teach leadership, I come to these places to do speeches, and I earn money that way. So where it overlaps for me of the three loops is to teach leadership. But I only came up with this idea recently. In the beginning, was I only thought about becoming a CEO of Nissan. And right now, I've come to the next stage. So it's important to advance your mission and improve it. 
Of course, this is the same for you as well, what you're good at and what you like changes. So you want to, for example, you need English to do something good for others, but you're not good at English right now, so you need to improve. So you need to continuously think about what your mission is. I think that's very important. So what you're good at, of course, you can be passionate about. And what you're good at, uh, of course, you would work hard with. And something that you can do for others is very important as well. Where it overlaps with, with these three loops should be your mission. The second time at SFC, I've given a speech about six months ago, and I had a chance to talk to a lot of the students. And some students already have their own companies, and I felt that a lot of the students were working very hard. I myself didn't study very hard when I was a student, so I was very inspired by these students that I talked to. But on the other hand, I thought they were in a rush to set up a business, to become rich. But that's not what it's all about. To build a business is not the goal, it's a tool. By building a company, you want to improve the world and make society a better place. And everything else is just a bonus. Life is long. So what you need to do right now is to make a business plan. If I were a student, or if the audience, if I had, a, if you were my son or my daughter and you were a student, I would ask for you to read books, travel, hang out with your friends, study history. I think those things are much more important. So you don't have to be in a rush. And change your mission whenever is necessary. Setting up a business is not the purpose or the goal, it's a tool. So please don't rush yourself and make a strong foundation to grow your roots. That is how to grow a strong tree. With just short, small roots, you can only grow a small flower. So first, build yourself as a human being. Students have a lot of time, so please use that efficiently. I myself, as I have mentioned earlier, my mission is to teach leadership. What you love, what you're good at, and what you can do for others. Please do not stop thinking about these three circles. Thank you very much.